Rose in a time of 52.92, a new high school national record. Back to back to back to back state champions. Sports, Nebraska's home for championship sports, is live from Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska for the 2019 NSAA Football Championships. We kick off day number two with a morning battle between the Pierce Blue Jays at 12-0 and the Wahoo Warriors also at 12-0. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm Larry Putney, along with former Husker Damon Benning. Great to have you with us for breakfast at Memorial Stadium. Day number two of our championship coverage. Yesterday, we crowned three state champions in Class D1, D2, and Class B last night. What a battle that was in Class B as Scott just outlasted Scott's Bluff 21 to 20. Three more coming your way today. We kick it off in C1 with Pierce and Wahoo. We'll end it tonight in Class A with Westside and Bell West. But again, Mark Bramer has his Pierce Club back down here once again. It's been a while since they've been down here. Perennial power in the state of Nebraska. And what do they usually do well? They run the ball well. And Carson A. Strike is a great example of what that Pierce team is all about. Yeah, you don't get 1,600 yards and 23 <laughs> touchdowns by accident. He is very adept at toting the mail. He's really good in small spaces. And he's a power runner, too. He's heavy behind his pads. He does it all for these guys. And it's a good mirror image because they're going to see a team that can run it almost equally as well. Yeah, Trev Lubin's an outstanding running back. Yeah, he's the power in the speed and power. He is a downhill guy, 1,800 yards, 36 touchdowns. The good thing with Wahoo, this Pierce matchup, is it's kind of mirror images of each other in terms of ground and pound. It could boil down to the quarterback play. And we'll see what happens there. Could be one of those that goes very quickly as well as both teams kind of ground it out, yeah. especially with the weather coming in. And speaking of weather down in the field, Sean Callahan gets to enjoy the action from the sideline today as the weather continues to drop the temperature throughout the day. Sean? Let's play three, gentlemen. And uh, guys, as you look at this game, uh, there is some new blood in Lincoln as Wahoo has never been to a Class C or Class B state championship game in their program's history. They've been awfully close, and that has been the story for them. Uh, they've been beat in the semifinals the previous three years to the team that has won the state championship, so they're close. And obviously, Pierce has not been back to Lincoln since 2008, so kind of a different feel here from what we've seen here in past C C1 uh, championship games as two teams, one that's never been here and one that hasn't been here in over 10 years. Well, thank you very much, Sean. Please stay warm because it's going to be a chilly one down there today. 34 now, but temperatures expected to drop throughout the day. In fact, early projections had us kicking off at around, you know, 40, 41, which means the snow would have held off until later in the afternoon. But you can see now we're getting the snow already here at Memorial Stadium, 34 degrees. And this is what is on its way to Lincoln and Memorial Stadium as much of the state has been blanketed with the white stuff already. And it's on its way here to the eastern part of the state yeah once i figured out the importance of the farmer's almanac and <laughs> what it actually means it is calling for a, a a harsh winter so i figured oh this thing must be pretty legit is that right yeah a harsh winter harsh winter yeah, that's great once i crossed uh the platte river you, the skies darkened in a hurry you know, leaving omaha this morning it was a little sunny huh and uh that dissipated quickly well you can see they are bundled up in the stands here hardy fans from pierce as well as Wahoo getting ready to brave these morning temperatures. It'll be a chilly one this afternoon as well as we have Class C2 kicking off this afternoon right here at Memorial Stadium. And then later tonight, we hope that we don't have too much of the white stuff so we can you know, showcase some of the great talent we have in the stadium Class A with multiple D1 players playing later tonight. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those rare games where the, the talent will be so elite. You don't want to see the weather hamper right. uh, what could potentially go on. Getting ready for the introduction of both teams here at Memorial Stadium. That'll bring these fans to their feet as the Pierce Blue Jays, who are unbeaten on the year, come in 12 0. Wahoo Warriors also unbeaten. One of our better matchups of these state championships. The top two seeds making it here to the championship game. Pierce can look back at a big win against Columbus Lakeview when they really started to turn it on. Mark Bramer, so they always thought they might have a chance to get here this year, but when they played a good Columbus Lakeview team and 
beat them 56 to nothing. That's when he starts saying, we might have something special here. And they have been special as they've been averaging 49 points per game, holding their opponents to just 13. On the other sideline, it'll be the Wahoo Warriors also at 12 and 0. And their specialty this year has been defense. They have allowed just four and a half points per game. They average 48 scoring. So both of these teams have been dominating opponents all year long. Yeah, a sneaky X factor too. Wahoo's kicking game is top notch. So if field position is going to be an issue and you need points, uh, place kicking for Wahoo is outstanding. Pierce on the other hand, not as not as good, let's say, yeah. <laughs> relatively <laughs> speaking in terms of place kicking. So we'll see if that's an issue. Well, it is about time now to introduce you to these two teams who will be competing for this class C1 state championship, the Blue Jays and the Warriors. First ever trip down here to Memorial Stadium for the Wahoo Warriors and head coach Chad Fox, who's in his 18th season. Mark Bramer's been down here several times, but as Sean told you off the top, not since 2008. They, they were a runner up, I guess, in 2010. They haven't won it since 2008. They went through that stretch in early 90s, mid 90s, where they were down here three of four years. Let's go to Steve Lemon for introductions. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the introduction of the players and coaches. First, here are the Pierce High Blue Jays. Well, they brought the sledgehammers. They are ready to do some work. The Pierce Blue Jays. And Mark Bramer's philosophy, no need to introduce individual players. We are a team, we'll remain a team. No one gets highlighted, we come out together. And that has been Mark Bramer's approach for the 24 years he's been the head coach. Here's a look at the comparison of the two teams. We mentioned both averaging above 47 points per game, both holding their opponents. Uh, a little more impressive for Wahoo, just 4.5 yards per game, yards allowed, all similar. Time now to introduce you to the Warriors of Wahoo. Back to Steve Lemon. And now here are the starters for the Wahoo Warriors. Number three, Connor Granjanet. Number four, Colin Ludwig. Number six, Rolando Sotelo. Number eight, Cooper Hancock. Number 11, Trevin Lubin. Number 15, Thomas Wado. Number 19, Jesus Zaragoza. Number 20, Peyton Walling. Number 26, Luke Partridge. Number 32, Grant Holterman. Number 44, Nate Fox. Number 50, Logan Rubeck. Number 52, Cole Burdusky. Number 53, Alan Cooper. Number 56, Evan Divis. Number 58, Brody Specht. Number 60, Brandon Swan. Number 61, Matthew Holdsworth. Number 62, Justin Knuckles. Number 66, Callan Phillips. Number 75, Carson Lavalley. And number 79, Gunnar Bonyek. The head coach of Wahoo is Chad Fox. And now here are the rest of the Wahoo High School players and coaches. Now they've been close several times, but it's the first trip to Memorial Stadium. In fact, the only teams that this Wahoo squad has lost to over the last three years are state champions. They've been knocked off in the semis and the quarters by the eventual state champs. And there is the head coach, Chad Fox, in his 18th year, 128 and 53. Let's take a look at 
where these two teams come from. Pierce, obviously, in the northeast part of the state. Pierce, Nebraska, Wahoo, just, oh, what, maybe a 45-minute drive here to Memorial Stadium, maybe less than that. Right around the corner. Wahoo knocked off SCOTUS in round one and Wayne in the second round, 21-7. Pierce with wins over Ord and Adams Central. Well, this showdown in Class C1 between unbeaten teams from Wahoo and Pierce. Time now for our national anthem. Let's go back to Steve Lemon. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association and its member schools, welcome to the 2019 NSAA State Football Championship Finals. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please rise and remove your hats to honor America for the singing of our national anthem. Our anthem today will be sung by the Ashland Greenwood High School Quartet under the direction of Amy Krantz Went. You see, by the dawn to the light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose bright stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streamed, and the rock is red glare. Seen in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the The Ashland School. That is the Ashland Greenwood Quartet. As we get ready for a state championship in Class C1 from here at Memorial Stadium, glad you could join us. Come on back, we'll have kickoff between Pierce and Wahoo on NET. Dvorak Brothers Ranch's Red Angus understands that agriculture is the backbone of our state's proud educational and activities heritage. For 140 years, we've grown with Nebraska. We look forward to continuing the evolution of the beef industry and recognizing the rich past from which our state's educational programs have benefited. For information on our upcoming Red Angus Bull Sale or our family's history, DvorakBrothersRanches.com. The uh, money that comes from Constellation goes directly back into our county 4-H program, so they're directly impacting young people and the development of young people, whether that's leadership uh, development, citizenship development, or helping them develop life skills. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. What do you think about going to college? I'm kind of scared. I feel nervous a little bit. That's kind of a tough one. I'm not really sure yet. I'm excited for college. <laughs> How are you going to pay for it? To be honest, I don't really know. That's actually a really good question. <laughs> um, so what if you had a friend you could ask? not just on the good days, not just on the challenging ones, not just during business hours, or when relaxing, but always, for the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. You can watch today's game live on your computer, tablet, or smartphone at netnebraska.org slash sports or on the free NET Nebraska app. Live streaming also supported through Apple TV and Chromecast. You can get the free app at netnebraska.org slash app. Here are the guys who will be managing the game for us. Jeff Freemore and his crew, umpire Justin Lacey, Arlen Paxton, Bob Landis, Spitzer Shiflett, and our red hat, once again, 
Like Rick Stromer has been our Red Hat in every state championship game since 1996. 20 years. 20 years. I don't know, five years ago, he said, I'm hanging it up. Apparently, he's just, he can't hang it up. He keeps those Oreos in his pocket. There's Mark Bramer. The head coach of Pierce, Chad Fox, the head coach of Wahoo. Two easy guys to cheer for. Good coaches, absolutely. Two quality teams, well coached. Love to ground and pound. Should be one of our better state championship games. Yeah, this I think it'll reveal itself early, too. This will boil down to the offensive and defensive lines of Wahoo, in my opinion. You know who Pierce is. You know what they're going to do. They're going to line it up and run it. And while that's what Wahoo wants to do, too, a slight advantage in the interior, at least on paper, to Pierce. So Jesus Zaragoza will kick it off. Back deep for Pierce is Logan Muller, Dalton Freeman, Carson A strike taken at about the three yard line by a strike out past the 20 where he's met immediately and dropped. Nice defensive play by Grant Coulterman on special teams and Pierce will take over at its 21 yard line. So here is number four the quarterback Dalton Freeman. Freeman 367 yards through the air 589 rushing and six touchdowns. He started as a freshman, has started every year. Coach Bramer said they took some bumps and bruises early in their career, but here they are. Carson A strike with the carry. Dalton Freeman, two of five players who have started since their freshman year for this Blue Jay squad. Yeah, right away, you're going to see tempo. A lot of deception with this veer trap kind of option game. Hard to simulate in practice. You have to be sound and get lined up correctly. So a strike motions out along with Logan Moeller. Give up the middle, not much there. Good hit right in the middle by Grant Coulterman. And Coulterman with the stop after a short game. That'll bring up third down here for the Blue Jays. Yeah, you want collisions and you want them violent. Find number 32. He hits <laughs> just about anything that moves. You don't get over 100 tackles doing what he does without having a nose for the football. A lot of pre-snap adjustments for the Blue Jays. Third down, and we'll call it six. Nothing doing, and a great play again by that Warrior defense. Play made by Brandon Swan, the senior. And that'll be a three and out of the first possession for the Blue Jays. We talked about how tough that Warrior defense has been this year. Uh, that's just good football IQ. He's an edge rusher, but he feels the little slip pass and kind of peels off and makes the play. It's just a good individual play. So back to punt it away is Dalton Freeman. Freeman. Angles it to the sideline and out of bounds at about the 45 yard line. So good field position for the Warriors to start the game. Defensively, three and out they force. We'll see what they can do when they come back with the ball. Whether it's spring planting, fall harvesting, or just a drive across the state, Soy Biodiesel helps a diesel powered engine operate in a demanding job. Soybean oil from Nebraska soybeans makes biodiesel a renewable fuel that's also environmentally responsible. The soybean checkoff plays a major role in supporting the use and availability of biodiesel. The Nebraska Soybean Board, growing opportunity from the ground up. High school sports fans, when your team isn't playing or you want a break from the action, GoSarpy.com has the latest for concerts, family fun, shopping, and more. Just minutes from the state championship venues, Sarpy County also has over 2,000 hotel rooms. GoSarpy.com's calendar of events will help you plan your next adventure in Sarpy County. GoSarpy.com, so near, so fun. No doubt that's exactly what Chad Fox's team did. They set the tone three and out for the Pierce Blue Jays on Pierce's first drive of the game. Chad Fox in his 18th year. This team has pitched five shutouts this year against Wayne, Platteview, and then in the playoffs against Columbus, Scotus, and Boys Town. A couple of shutouts as well. 
One of the benefits of doing this job is I get a chance to make a lot of friends with people in different communities, gather a lot of intel and insight. This ought to be a good one. So Tom Wado is the quarterback. He'll roll to his right out of the flat. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Luke Partridge just through his hands. Coverage provided by the outside linebacker Garrett Meyer. Take a look at the replay here. I actually think we talked a little bit about the battle between Wado and, and Freeman. I think this is this ultimately may be what it boils down to. It sounds weird to say with two teams that run the football, but a pass play or two is going to have to be made today, I think, and what could be a, a tight one. Peyton Walling in front of Trevin Lubin. The handoff is to Lubin. Lubin puts a foot in the ground and then carried backward for a very little, I'll call it no gain on second down. That'll bring up third and long for the Warriors. And the impact players offensively for Wahoo, Wado at the quarterback and Peyton Walling, who is a running back slash fullback. And Garrett Meyer, 76 tackles, three interceptions. You saw him in coverage on that first play. Yeah, rangy, very good with, he gets so around the football too. Opportunistic, that's how I describe number eight one. Wado from the shotgun to his right is Lubin. Give to Lubin. Lubin met in the backfield, slips through that tackle, but nowhere to go. Maybe a gain of one or two. It'll bring up fourth down for the Warriors. So both teams defensively come up with three and outs. This might be one of those with this weather, Damon, it could be one of those field possession who makes a mistake kind of games I guess if you they I think the distinct advantage in special teams goes to Wahoo so we'll see if that you know if it's close enough where that can be a factor I definitely like them in the kicking game but you got to value the football in between for it to matter Coulterman high punt lands the 32 takes a nice pierce roll for about two yards and they'll take over at the 34 let's go down on a chilly sideline <laughs> Sean Kelly. Guys, you talk about punting and special teams. You know, both these teams have been so dominant this year, but particularly Pierce, I was talking to their staff. He goes, you know, we really haven't had a punt all that much yeah. this season, um, especially uh, with the stakes like this and the winds blowing. Um, so punting is going to be a factor, and your punter might be the MVP of this game if he can flip the field on a few of these. The keep here by Dalton Freeman. Freeman slips one tackle. Leans forward, but not much of a game. Maybe one or two yards on first down for Freeman. That's a fantastic play by Lubin running the alley because Freeman's got a crease. I like the deception, the nice kick out. You see the natural crease. But how about Lubin? There is some real estate if he doesn't make that play. Dropped in the backfield off the edge. Play made again by Brandon Swan. No gain in the play, third down. Yeah, one of my favorites on film, it might have been the hair, Kalen Cooper. <laughs> He's a good football player, highly, highly active. White substitution coming in after he went off. Pass over the middle, batted down. That's Lubin again. Nice defensive play by Lubin. Take a look at the replay here. We've seen some nice secondary play these last two days. Off arm isn't a factor. Does a good job of using his free hand. So Pierce once again in to punt it away. Dalton Freeman. Gets it away. Ball's loose, still loose, it's on the ground, scooped up by Pierce. Early big play in the kicking game, goes to the Blue Jays. A little ominous foreshadowing, just uttered the phrase, you have to value the football in between for special teams to matter. And it rears its ugly head right there for Wahoo. One more look. Nice job digging it out of there. I like to tell you what, Kutherod, he came down with bad intentions. <laughs> you play special teams like that, there's something to it on a day like this. It's chilly, it's cold. The double fours. 
making an impact early. Not bad for a team that doesn't cover too many punts, right? Right. <laughs> Again, the ability to handle sudden change on a stage like this. It's your first time here in Lincoln. Not much there for Carson Astrike. Ten total plays now, Damon, a total of six yards between the two teams. Yeah, good old-fashioned Maryland eye. We joked earlier about playing this one in a phone booth. I would say a closet, but I know how you live on the south side, and you probably have got a walk-in, so I'll stick with the phone booth. <laughs> Started already. Second down and nine, under pressure, slips one, slips a second tackle, picked off, intercepted. Got real estate, Larry. Down the near sideline. One man out there can stop him and does. Trips him up. The pick by Cole Bordusky. Boy, I tell you, how about that? That is an answer for sudden change this early. How do you do? Wahoo! They just couldn't, oh, the, got hit on the delivery, tried to make a play, and that's what playmakers do, right? Couldn't set his feet. Mordusky there. All the way back to the 14, make it 13-yard line. First down. How about that? Nice, nifty play. Trev Lubin in for the touchdown. Good old-fashioned 22 personnel. Two backs, two tight ends. Iso for six. Well, if you like football, it's <laughs> you got great right. weather and two tough-minded football teams. Zaragoza in for the point after attempt. He's 70 of 73 in PATs this year. That is up and right down the middle for Zaragoza. He's got a big leg. Look at this offense for the Warriors. Outscoring their opponents 574 to 54. And it's workmanlike too. I mean, they're yeah, right. The, the sticks right there, double ones. He represents 1,800 yards on the ground. Wado doesn't throw it a ton. So they, they just wear on you, and then they break one. They wear on you, and then they break one. Heard all year about their physicality. I said, this is a team I've got to watch. They are definitely that. Well, that was a one-play drive, 13 yards. I recognize that young man. Yes, is that sir. Coach Shada? It is Coach Shada, yeah. Wait, how do those offensive linemen age so well? It's like they <laughs> lose one. Former Husker. Yep. Good egg. Not That's to be it. outdone by Coach Legate on the other side. That's right. Well, that wrestling program at Pierce has to be in good hands with Coach Legate, don't they? Tyler Legate, coaching for Pierce. And you saw Alex Shada coaches the offensive and defensive lines. So fun to watch teams take on the personality of their coach. Both these teams are direct reflections of their coaching staffs. So there it goes to Indy. Send it away and. See what Pierce can do. That's an into the wind, too, LP. Wow. Wow. Into a pretty stiff wind as well. Let's get out of the field. Guys, Wahoo knew that Pierce was going to hammer him in this game, but they liked how they matched up. Just talking to some of the guys down here, they felt physically their size up front. They got about eight guys over 210 pounds, and they knew Pierce hadn't seen a lot of teams with their type of physicality up front. And thus far, they've stood up. As you guys know, uh, Wahoo has not allowed more than 14 in a game. They've only allowed wow. 14 points over the entire playoff run. Yeah, it's been an impressive year defensively for this Wahoo squad. There is Freeman. He'll keep it himself. Dalton Freeman with maybe the most positive gain of this first quarter for the Blue Jays, a gain of about four. Yeah, it's a really nice concept. They stem late. By that, I mean there's a lot of late D-line movement. They can play in an odd or an even front, you know, a four-man front, a five-man front. They give you some versatility. 
had more yardage on that touchdown run than we've had for the other 12 plays in the game so far. Good carry there by A strike. Brings up third down and short. We'll call third and three from the 18 yard or 28 yard line. Again, more good alley running. A strike's hard to handle in the open field, but when you fit in the run game like this, look at Lubin. That's good back on good back right there. He's a fantastic player. I was pretty impressed with him on film. A strike motions out. Tinker in the backfield. The give is to A strike. Cuts it up, spins out of the tackle, and enough for the first first down for the Blue Jays of the game. Now you see how important it is for Pierce to stay on schedule. This is very manageable for them. Look, two pullers, little kick out, you get one wrapper. Nice little crease. A strike doesn't need much. Take the give to Tinker and the keep there by Freeman. Not much there for Dalton Freeman as the stop made by Lubin. I can really appreciate an offense like this. It gives you a whole buffet in the run game. You've got Veer, you've got Trap, you've got quarterback midline. You've got all the things to offset good D-line plates. A very good concept offense. And when you've got a signal caller like number four, Freeman, you're in good hands. Good decision makers, crafty with the ball. Equipment timeout in the field as she was being tied. Callan Phillips. Freeman probably could use a little break. He took a good shot on yeah. the thigh. No. A handoff to Colorado. And Kuntrad leans forward, and that's near a first down from the carry by Jeremiah Kuntrad. I thought here Tinker could be the X factor today in terms of slipping one on some of this deception and it's almost like old school count like cross buck action. Yeah. But again you see Freeman's ball handling. Can't run this offense without the maestro. Back into a more traditional eye set here. Give to the fullback and not much there for Brent Tinker as he Leaves forward for maybe a yard or two, brings up second down, and I'll call it seven. So that's a win for Pierce in terms of staying on schedule. It's, it's, I say just three in air quotes, but you do the math times four. Back to throws Freeman. Freeman lofts it up and over the head of his intended receiver. Boy, he missed a wide open A strike. Somebody upstairs will be sending that one down. A strike uh, unaccounted for. Good job of not showing any negative body language. He knew they missed one there. Gavin Larson was the intended receiver. They lower you to sleep and then that play action gets you. Bring up third down. Well, to his right again. Throws back across his body. Defenders out there. Picked off. Intercepted by Luke Partridge. It's a really good break on the ball by Partridge. A strike was open early. The ball's a little underthrown. Got him on a little wheel route. So leaks out of the backfield. Yeah, hung in the air just too long. Well, how about making a play in the air? That's just going and getting it, huh? Nice job by Partridge, the senior right quarterback. Some sort of a pear tree joke in there, but it's a little too soon considering we haven't hit Thanksgiving yet. So Oahu will take over after their second turnover here in this first quarter. Give inside into the teeth of that Pierce Blue Jay defense. Stop made by Cruz Gleason. Carry for Ludwig. Ludwig, 900 plus yards rushing on the year. Defense! 
give is to Lubin. Trev Lubin makes a couple of cuts in the backfield and slips down after a short gain of about two yards. It'll bring up third and four for Oahu. Pierce obviously very sound in the run game. Usually, you know, your reflection defensively of who you are on offense. And they know how to seek to face this kind of offense. Pulls it out from Lubin, looks downfield, got a man, complete! Inside the 25-yard line, the bullet from Wado. He referenced it, he doesn't throw it much, but when he does, this is, how, this is what they have to do. You have to be effective in the passing game. That was an outstanding route, too. Snapped, <laughs> snapped him off on the little skinny post, cross Freeman's face. 31 yard completion to Cooper Hancock. And here is Lubin. Good gain on first down as the Warriors beginning to get a little bit of rhythm here on this drive. Yeah, and if you're taking notes at home, we've seen the 22 personnel go for six on the run by Lubin in between the tackles. Then the Maryland Eye gets them a nice healthy chunk as well. Maybe something to be had, guard center guard, for this offense in between. Give to Lubin again. Carries the defender, Dylan Keeler. Keeler with the tackle, but not until Lubin leaned forward. Very near a first down. Looks like he has enough. Yep, maybe half a ball short. Not all run games are created equal. Pierce uh, does it a little bit different with kind of the pinning and pulling Timeout. up front. For measurement on the field. Wahoo a little bit more of the base blocking where it's hat on a hat it's physical regardless you better be able to stand in there and take it love to see two teams well coached so well coached up front along both sides and yep we saw it last night with scott's bluff and and scott and we're seeing it again this morning with pierce and wahoo Let's get out of the field to Sean Callahan. Hey guys, we've already seen a lot of Lubin for Wahoo. He will be a future Cornhusker walk-on. He's one of about 15 walk-on commits. I know they're very excited to get him in, in the walk-on program. 1,800 yards rushing plus 36 touchdowns on the year. Here is Lubin again with it. It's interesting as Sean was mentioning, uh, he's walking on at Nebraska. He's, he's got deceptive size. It's much bigger uh, the closer you get to him. He's got a good lower body, good trunk, room to grow. Tough and competitive. I'll always take those two adjectives. Short gain on first brings up second down and eight here for the Warriors. Lubin slips one tackler. Leans forward inside the 10 yard line down to the nine. Tackle made by Dylan Keeler. We well, see a couple of pullers here. Wahoo is doing work up front, doing a good job of getting color on color. Third down and six from inside the 10. Keeler again. Short gain for Keeler will bring up fourth down with their kicking game and this weather. It's an interesting decision. I don't think there's much to think about with this place kicking game. You go up two scores if you can. Zaragoza is in there to try the field goal on the year. Zaragoza is six of eight in field goals along of 40 on the year. This will be from 24 yards out. Kicked by Zaragoza right between these collegiate goalposts. And a 10 to nothing lead for the Warriors. Uh, I, I really like the advantage in the kicking yeah. game for Wahoo, and you can tell he's a good place kicker. He's got good leg. Not a ton of attempts, but you just watch enough. Narrow goal post. You don't get the hash either, so it's a little different with college hash marks. 
angles can be tricky at Memorial Stadium. So both of the turnovers for the Blue Jays have led to points for the Warriors. That last drive, 53 yards, nine plays. Shoot up three minutes and 52 seconds of clock, and we are nearing the end of quarter number one with the Warriors on top, 10 to nothing. Mentioned it off the top, Damon, but this, this has been a Warrior program that has been on the come for a while. They obviously haven't been down at state ever before, never been in the championship game looking for the school's first ever state title. But over the last two years, the only losses they have suffered have been to eventual state champions. Back in 2017, they lost in the regular season and the playoffs to Norfolk Catholic, which ended up winning the title. Then last year in 18, they lost to Aurora in the semis and in week three, so two losses, both to the eventual champs. Yeah, we've seen Baylor Shireman and company from Aurora. We know what that, right. that, that act was like. Yeah, no doubt. But it's it's cyclical, isn't it? We've heard about Newman for a long time over these last five, six years, well, seven, eight, with the whole run of the Vedrals, and we've been hearing, right? Wahoo's coming, Wahoo's coming. Little squib kick along the ground, scooped up by the up back at about the 18 yard line. Not much there as he's met immediately. I tell you what, that that hurt me. Is that balling? <laughs> Pop at, you know. Watch the ball falling. Ah. Well, he's fortunate he didn't hurt himself. Pretty good foot eye coordination. Brent Tinker, Tinker. Let's get on the field to Sean Callahan. Guys, this is an interesting spot for Pierce. I mean, they have been so dominant this year. They have not been down 10 0 like this in the game. Um, and, and just how they react because they, they have rolled through everybody on their schedule. And uh, this is going to be one of those key drives for them now to see how they react. And you can see they're even changing a little formation. They're putting big bodies in the backfield there. Tinker at the top of the eye. Oh, this is easy. Guys lobbing me softballs. Good good <laughs> distinction by Sean. And you with the hat on a hat yeah. is really what I think Pierce is going to have to do to be patient. End of quarter number one. It's been all Wahoo here in the first thanks to two big turnovers. This interception by Bordusky led to the touchdown. Participating in multiple Nebraska high school activities has taught me the value of teamwork. I learned how to be a strong leader among my peers. We set goals as a team and work hard to accomplish them. I strive to excel not only in the classroom, but on the playing field. The Nebraska School Activities Association providing opportunities in 25 activities for our member high schools. NSAA activities, the other half of education. Let's face it, most days are unremarkable. We commute, we work, we practice, and then we do it all over again. When the moment is all that matters, public power is there for you. When your livelihood or future career depends on it, we have your back. As the time counts down on the scoreboard, no one is cheering you on more than us. Make each moment of this year and next count. We'll be sure to do the same. Nebraska Public Power District, together with your local public power utility. Coverage of the 2019 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, the Nebraska Public Power District, Aurora Cooperative, Constellation Energy, Sarpy County Tourism. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. We're back at Memorial Stadium. There's a long time Nebraska coach and Nebraska face, very familiar to many. Jeff Jamrog on the left, now the coach at Midland. He's done a nice job recruiting here in the state. Yes, he has. He's done a really good job turning that program around, and he's everywhere. There's a reason he recruits well. He's His presence is very well known here locally. Tackle made by Bordusky on the carry by Brent Tinker. Tinker no slouch, he had 1,500 plus yards on the year for the Pierce Blue Jays. In fact, last year, the Blue Jays, just the second team in the history of Nebraska high school football to have 3,000 yard rushers. They probably would have done it this year as well, if not for an injury to Freeman early on. Yeah. 
He's kind of my X factor watching this offense if if O strike gets bottled up at all. Great play off the corner there. The stop made by Wado. Really, you can really see Wahoo flowing at the point of attack. They went on the perimeter. It's hard to run sweep or edge rush game without good perimeter blocking. And Wado does a good job winning his individual matchup. Who said quarterbacks can't hit? We saw two last <laughs> night that brought serious Boy, drama. And no doubt about that. Wado must have been inspired. Big bump up going for it here on fourth down. And now jump back to kick it. Maybe check you see how Wahoo would respond. It's a crucial point here. Need a good kick. Freeman lines it straight down the field. Takes a good roll, though. It's going to turn out all right for Pierce. Rolls down near the 31 yard line. The Warriors will take over. Pierce still looking to get something going offensively. Back in there at quarterback, Thomas Wado. Wado nearly a thousand yards through the air this year. He gives it to Colin Ludwig. Ludwig is stacked up. Both linebackers there, Tinker. Valverde was there as well. Underneath the pile was Colby Rickert. 260 pound senior for the Blue Jays. Second down and seven. Rado rolls right, looks downfield, he'll keep. Out near the first down marker, past the 41 yard line. Yeah, they, they should be calling for the sticks to move. The line to make, he needed the 41 and a half. He might want to call in the chains on this one. And they will. I don't want to, I don't want to jinx it. I was on a roll last night. <laughs> so you're cherry picking, is that what you're saying? I'll tell you. Take the easy one. Anytime you can go three <laughs> for three, eh? <laughs> call that a trend. I'm going to say he's short, LP. I was going to give it to him. He'll, he'll probably be right. Much better eyesight. By half football. Well, there you go. See how quickly that, that goes away? You go from you know, batting 1,000 to 750. I mean, next one, next miss, and big trouble. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so first down out past the 40 tackle made by Dylan Keeler again on the carry from Peyton Walling I like a strike on on defense as well kind of watching his movement he flashed on film. Plays along the line of scrimmage. Cuts it back up to Zlubin. Enough for another first down. Good carry by Lubin on second down at about five. He picked up seven. Watch this student body left. Two pullers and a kicker and one lead back. I think. Lubin struggling a little bit. Maybe it's the spat. He's kind of lost his footing uh, a couple of times trying to cut it back. I don't mind his style, though. I kind of vibing with the spat game. Toss to Lubin on the left side. He has some room out on the corner. Breaks one tackle down that far side and a nice gain for Lubin. Flag comes in late behind the play and we'll see what the call is but a nice gain for Lubin who before that carry had nine carries for 40 yards. It doesn't show up in the stat books but Peyton Walling is doing work as a lead blocker.
Holding called against the Warriors. Anytime you get to the edge, you get that seal game. Oh, there it is. It's free hand. So that'll negate a nice 11 yard gain and bring up first down and 20. And now all of a sudden you're behind the down and distance. I believe that's a spot foul. Oh, so we correct it. What? What do we got about six yards? So first and 14. Look at you, mathematician. Now 15, I was one off. Not bad. Sharp this morning. Nope. You know what? It is 14. Thank you. First and 14. <laughs> 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 Go back in the gun. How about this time? Uh -huh. Defense! 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 Motions out. Guido hands it off to Lubin. Lubin cuts it back right into the teeth of that flowing defense. Carter Rorick was there. Yeah, Pierce really doing a really good job at the point of attack on the perimeter. Lubin wants to get vertical as soon as he can. Sweep was kind of the design. He wants. To, he sees daylight. We got no problems with his judgment. Dylan Svoboda, the first man there, the senior defensive end. Quick hitter out of the flat, caught by Luke Partridge, and Partridge with a nice gain. That'll bring up third down and four from the 40-yard line of the Blue Jays. Yeah, you can tell that's a good job as an offensive play caller, right? You, that's intentional. You, you throw the quick hitch. You want third manageable. You take the easy yards to give yourself a good chance. You got two downs to make four here. Following the blocker into the hole very near a first down. He'll be tripped up at about the 36 and a half. It's just going to be about a half yard short here. Bring up fourth down at about a yard. Pierce in a five man front. The sixth will be a strike coming up and playing along the line of scrimmage in an end position. This is big body on big body here. The keep and up for a first down. Gain of five on the quarterback sneak. Now to the 31 and the chains move again here for Wahoo. Watch the push here. Boy, that is a really good down block right there from Spavoda. Right on target, slips one tackle and a good, nice gain on the reception by Cooper Hancock. Gain of 10 right at the yard marker. Coming right at you here. You see sprint out. Boy, that is on the money. Looking with a little bit of tempo here now for Wahoo. Kind of in a rhythm offensively. <laughs> Pulled back down by Wado. Well, good job of staying at home for Pierce, but when you only need two, there you have it. Cruz Gleason on the tackle. I really like Brandon Swan up front for Wahoo. He's a good job. Now this is a very methodical drive here for the Warriors, chewing up clock. Lubin again. Gain of four on first down for Trev Lubin. It's, it's like you look up and there's a, there's a gold jersey, you know, seven, eight yards down the field, you know, driving guys from Pierce it's hard to gauge sometimes when you're watching film because you, you don't really know competition I felt both these D lines and offensive lines were very very good I have not been disappointed 
Guido gives to Lubin. Lubin trying to get that corner on the right side. Cuts it back up. That's enough for a first down inside the 10-yard line. And that will bring up first down and goal for the Warriors trying to go up by three scores. Yeah, Pierce has some decisions to make, too, with what kind of front they want to use. When the center's uncovered, he gets to second level in a hurry. When he is covered, you allow at least one of the guards to be able to pull. A little bit of a dilemma here. Lubin behind the guys up front, leans forward inside the five, down to the four, maybe the three-yard line on a nice carry by Trevin Lubin. Lubin's had kind of a nagging ankle injury since the middle of the season, but he's taken some time off during practice, and these extra few days after the last game before the state championship on Tuesday really helped him heal up. Yeah, watch 60 and 66, right? That's a good job by the camera crew. These guys are working in tandem. Lupin. Down to the two. Penetration there by Seth Valverde. Valverde tripped him up. He leaned forward, got a couple after the hit. It'll bring up third down now and goal. A couple of opportunities here for the Warriors to knock this in. Heisinger. He's playing at the tackle nose spot for Pierce, number 78. Really good football player. Lubin leans forward in and touchdown. Trevin Lubin, his second of the day. And the Swiss Army knife on that offense, right? A little can opener, a little opener. Look at this lead, lead, just power. That, that, that is just, that is old school 46, 47, however you do your numbering system power right there. Point after attempt from Zaragoza. Zaragoza knocks it through. And it is 17 to nothing. Wahoo on top. Yeah, good kick out right there. Guess who? That's Swan doing work. 15 plays, 68 yards, 627 of clock chewed up for Wahoo. Time now for our NSAA championship trivia. You can be the first person to email the correct answer to sports at netnebraska.org, and you will win this good-looking NET Sports Championship shirt, extra large in size. And our trivia question is, what is the longest recorded touchdown run in a Class C-1 playoff game? So it must be playoff, must be C-1, the longest recorded touchdown run. First correct answer, an email to sports at netnebraska.org. Wins that NET Sports Championship shirt. Let's go down on the field to Sean. As you look at uh, Pierce right now, they've got a tall order. Wahoo has not given up more than 14 in a game uh, all year. It's 17 to nothing at this point. Uh, this is unfamiliar territory, and Wahoo is right where they've been every week. So that physical size advantage down here, you really see it as Wahoo does not have a guy under 210 pounds on that front, and they are moving Pierce, and they are getting better and better here as the game moves along. Well, that's a great point, Sean. In the first two drives, Wahoo had just three plays in one yard and a turnover in their last three drives, 25 plays, 139 yards, 17 points. Now, we like to say as a staff uh, over there on 38th and Ames, the colder it gets, the temp drops with each hit. So it, yeah. it wears on you over time. And then you find yourself behind, and it gets even colder. I guarantee you Pierce uh, is, is feeling the temp a little bit more than Wahoo right now, and it has a lot to do with the score. Another boot in and through the end zone for Zaragoza, and he's putting on a show here. <laughs> at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, I don't like to walk on my feet when it's cold. I can't imagine taking a hit like there. Yeah, it's, it's different. It, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of psychological warfare, and you can't let the score be an indicator of how good you feel about yourself. If you're Pierce, you got, you got four minutes, four-minute offense. You've you got to stay the course here. You don't want to give the ball back, kicking into the wind. Bill Freeman back in there at quarterback. 
Very near side. Lubin with the tackle. On the carry by A strike. A little jet sweep game. Wahoo doing a really good job keeping her shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. A lot easier to play defense that way. No gain on the play. Second down and 10. A strike in motion again. This time to give him the fullback fumble. Ball to the ground recovered by Wahoo. On the spot is Tom Wado. I tell you, well designed. The timing was a little off. Quick hitter with the dive. He had to let the jetter clear. And the third turnover of this first half for Pierce. Yeah, uh, you saw Tinker letting this, the sweep game clear. He's take better care of that. It looked high and tight. Pierce with six possessions here in this first half of play. Three punts and three turnovers. In yeah. We're officially in the danger zone here where you give up a score. 324 to go, and here's Lubin again. And the yardage starting to come in chunks now for Trevin Lubin. Ten-yard gain for Lubin puts him over 75 or near 75 here in this first half. It's almost with every. No, oh, that's out. Looks like he got it back. There was a scrum at the bottom. Go down to the field to Sean Callahan. Guys, yeah, that ball looked out, but luckily Lubin did recover. And as we saw yesterday, they can replay that. And if he would not have recovered that. There could have been a chance uh, Kevin Marr in the replay booth up top would have looked at that and, and uh, Pierce could have got the ball back. Well, I tell you what, I was overly impressed with the replay crew. Now, we're a little spoiled here. That's right. I mean, you get, <laughs> you get a guy like Kevin Marr uh, leading that deal, and not everybody's afforded that luxury. It's as good as it gets. Lubin sticks the foot in the ground and dodges the first man in. Well, this is the first year for replay here in these state championships at Memorial Stadium. And here is the protocol for replay. You can only reverse a call if it's indisputable. And then there are examples of the automatic replay. Scoring turnovers, timing errors, player down or out of bounds in the ball spot. We saw ball spot come into play last night with Scott's Bluff and Scott. Yeah. And what looked like a first down was moved back a couple of yards and Turned over and Scott went in to take the lead. Third down and eight. Ball at the 14 yard line and a timeout taken here by Chad Fox. Time now to take a look at last year's class C1 state championship game. The second-ranked Aurora Huskies face the fourth-ranked Ord Chanticleers with hopes of taking home the 2018 Class C-1 state football title. Aurora scored six points early in the first quarter, but Ord answered back to lead by one. The Huskies' offense dominated from there on out and scored 43 consecutive points with the help of Baylor Shearman's 189 passing yards. Aurora's defense was there to back up the offense and held the Chanticleers scoreless for the rest of the game to take home the Huskies' third state football championship. Yeah, and it was this Wahoo Warriors team that lost in the playoffs to the eventual champs from Aurora. Leading now here 17 to nothing, third and eight. Two minutes to go before half and an opportunity for Wahoo to take a commanding lead here late in this first half. Needless to say, this is a third down opportunity of, of the half thus far for Pierce. Got to find a way to force a field goal attempt. Slips the tackle, has room in front, enough for a first down. Big run again by Lubin. And Damon, those holes are just, the yard is, it's starting to pile up. More and more easier plays here for Wahoo. They are. And 
Kind of like those deep blue eyes. It's kind of like a shark. I think he smells blood in the water as a runner because he, he gets the free defender and he's now starting to find a way to deal with those defenders one on one. He's made guys miss in space and getting downhill. 20 carries, 87 yards for Lubin here in this first half. Laying the clock tick away. Here's Lubin again. In there for the touchdown. Three first half TDs for Trevin Lubin. Just a wave of gold up front as lead blockers. Impressive offensive line display in the first half against a very good Pierce team. Look at this. There's the kick out. You have two wrappers. I mean, it's. It's too easy. <laughs> that drive took just two minutes, eight seconds, and it's now 17 points off of turnovers, assuming that the extra point by Zaragoza is good, and it is. 17 points off of the turnovers for Wahoo. That play, that drive took just two minutes, eight seconds off the clock. And there you see the numbers for Lubin. I mean, Swan is pulling, and he's looking for someone to hit. He's just clean up. Uh, coming up at halftime, we'll talk NSA play production. Also, first half highlights and statistics as the snow continues to come down and a bit heavier now than it did to kick off. Yeah, Mother Nature does not want to be outdone today. <laughs> Let's go down to uh, Sean Callahan, who is on the field, I assume. And guys, that wind blowing sideways now uh, out of the north in the east. Uh, so it's it's going to be tough for anybody that wants to throw the football the rest of the day in the stadium. I mean, you're not going to get down the field very well with the way the wind is blowing uh, from the north and the east right now down here. Yeah, it is whipping. Snow looks like it's coming down sideways as well. And it has certainly picked up. Right. Zaragoza will kick it off. 24 to nothing. The guy that one of us saw this coming in no. the beginning of the game. Didn't foresee the three turnovers either, though. That is uh, right. yep. 17 points off those turnovers. Yep. Return out past the 24 near the 25 yard line. I mean, it's it's bad enough that Wahoo can wear on you without the aid of extra possessions. When you give them extra possessions, it wears on you in a hurry. Return by Tinker. And now Tinker in the backfield here for the Blue Jays. One minute, eight seconds to go before half. See if the Blue Jays can get something going. Larson in motion. The give is to a strike. Not much there. Leans forward. Maybe a couple of yards for a strike. Out to the 25. Brings up second and eight. Tackle made by Coulterman. On the option. Pitch out to A strike, and he is met on the edge. Great tackle by Luke Partridge. Now that's just winning out on the perimeter. That's my corner better than your wide receiver in the option game. And there he is. Solid tackle. Inside 10 seconds to go here before half. Bobbled snap, and that will be the final play of this first half. And it has been all Warriors here in the first 24 minutes at Memorial Stadium for the Class C1 State Championship. The score 24 to nothing. Wahoo on top. This one's all about regrouping. Mm. 
It's not so much about the weather as much as focus on the task at hand. And I know that's easy to say from where we are, although the window is open with the flurries coming in. Let's get out of the field to Sean. Guys, I'm with Wahoo head coach Chad Fox. Coach, you got to love how your team has responded to the elements, taking advantage of turnovers here in the first half. Yeah, you know, we, we came out, we fumbled that first punt, and it wasn't looking good for us. But you know what? We stuck tough to it. We've got, a, we've got some takeaways, which we've capitalized on. We're sitting in a great spot right now, but we've got to finish this thing. You know, there's 24 minutes left, and, and we've got to make sure we finish finish this game that we know the way we know we can play. And, and uh, we're right there. We're right there. How big will field position and special teams continue to be as the wind and the weather picks yeah, up here? It, it might be. I don't know. We don't, the, the weather doesn't bother us. I mean, we're just happy to be here, and we're just uh, excited to get the chance to play in this game, and we're going to make the most of it in the second half. Coach, good luck here the rest of the way. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Sean, I'm wondering if you agree with Chad Fox that the weather doesn't bother you. <laughs> We're at halftime, 24 to nothing. Wahoo leads Pierce. Early mornings, late nights, emotionally, physically, mentally tougher. Generations of trust, innovation, and hard work done side by side. The decisions you make for your land and livestock have a direct impact on your operation, the region, and the world. That is why we're there when you need us anytime, every time. We both have one chance, one season, one mission, tougher together, Aurora and you. After concussion, returning to the classroom is a priority of the NSAA. All brains return to learn. Not all brains return to play. After recognizing that an athlete has suffered a concussion, it is important to monitor the symptoms in the classroom before allowing the athlete to return to extracurricular activities. The NSAA requires coaches in all sports to take a concussion course once every three years. More information is available on our website, nsaahome.org. Student athletes are students first, athletes second. Interactive exhibits for all ages bring sports to life at the Nebraska High School Sports Hall of Fame. Nebraska's history of high school sports is alive, while historic memorabilia preserve the rich heritage. The Nebraska High School Sports Hall of Fame is for fans of all high school sports, like me. Inside the NSAA headquarters at 500 Charleston Street, just north of Haymarket Park in Lincoln. More information at nebhalloffame.org. Coverage of the 2019 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, the Nebraska Public Power District, Aurora Cooperative, Constellation Energy, and Sarpy County Tourism. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. Dominating performance here in the first half for Wahoo. They lead it over Pierce 24 to nothing. I'm joined now by assistant NSAA director Jeff Staus. Jeff's responsible for a couple of things. You deal with the media. I'm sorry about that, but it also deals with some of the fine arts. So why don't we start with uh, with play production and how that's going? Yeah, it's my first year overseeing the activity of play production for our office. Uh, Deb Velder, who had been a member of our staff for almost four decades, uh, has overseen that pro that activity as well as speech uh, for a long time in our office. So just getting my feet wet, trying to get into it. Uh, the people in the community play production and speech have been great uh, welcome me with open arms and uh, it's been a really good experience so far and that's uh, primarily supported by the folks in Norfolk uh, we have our state championship in Norfolk it's coming up here in two weeks uh, two weeks from tomorrow actually we'll start up there at the Johnny Carson Theater in Norfolk uh, we'll have three days of competition a couple classes each day and uh, really excited to get up there uh, see uh, what the the best and one act play production in Nebraska has to offer for us so uh, it's gonna be a, a great uh, few days up there in Norfolk yeah, talk about um, participation levels in the fine arts and really all activities across the NSAA. Well, uh, this year, actually, uh, the National Federation put out some statistics that uh, high school activity participation and athletic participation was down nationally for the first time in about 30 years. Uh, in Nebraska, over the last five years, we've actually seen an uptick uh, in 
participation, uh, not necessarily across the board, but as a whole, uh, we're looking uh, at numbers that are up. And a lot of that is uh, in part to uh, the increase in activity participation we've had. Speech play production have been up over the last five years and uh, really providing kids with opportunities here in Nebraska to not only be a, a part of their athletic teams, but their activity programs as well. I think all the studies show, too, that participation in, inter in extracurriculars and sports and really any type of activity is really a benefit for the entire um, experience of the student. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was a speech kid when I was in high school, but I was also a three-sport athlete. So, uh, you know, one of those things, uh, being able to get up and talk in front of folks, you know, that, that's something I learned uh, from my time as a speech kid. And, um, you know, you learn life skills, not just in athletics, but in activities as well. So uh, I'm really happy that here in Nebraska, we're able to offer those programs through our state association. Not every state is like that. So uh, Nebraska, it's been a, it's a, it's a really good thing for our kids. So that's the fun part of your job. The other part is dealing with the Nebraska media. So why don't we maybe talk a little bit, little bit about your daily interactions with folks who come here and, and, and how you have to help them really cover these events. Well, those are your words, not mine. In terms of the fun part, uh, we have a great group of folks here in Nebraska that cover uh, high school activities. Uh, we are an anomaly in terms of uh, sometimes when we have events like state football, state basketball, uh, even our state swimming championships, we run out of room for people uh, that want to cover those events. Um, and that is not a trend that is uh, – Elsewhere in America, uh, we have a lot of states that are struggling to find folks to cover high school sports and activities, and we definitely do not have that problem in Nebraska. Folks like NET, um, you guys do a great job of uh, telling the stories of our kids, our communities, and our, our teams, and uh, we really, as an NSA staff and board uh, and membership, couldn't be uh, more appreciative of what you and the other local media in our state do for us. So thank you very much for your coverage. Well, that's nice of you to say, Jeff. Thank you for everything that you do to help us. And I think it's really just, it's a reflection of the importance that Nebraskans place on these types of activities. And that's why it's so important to NET as well. So thanks very much. That's Jeff Staus with the Nebraska School Activities Association. We're at halftime. We'll come back and take a look at highlights from the first half action. Wahoo leads it here at half. Not just on the good days. Not just on the challenging ones. Not just during business hours. Or when relaxing. But always, for the past 125 years, Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Shadron State College, offering several online master's programs. Students can earn an organizational management degree in human services, sports management, or natural resources. Shadron State College also offers an accredited online Master of Business Administration degree. The eight-week online courses allow students to work at their own pace wherever they are. Shadron State College, serving Nebraska and beyond since 1911. Information at csc.edu. I'm Nicole Brungart, and I'm a part of the U.S. Women's Bobsled Team. I'm a four-time All-American, and I'm from Norfolk, Nebraska. Bobsledding was definitely not in the picture when I was growing up, but I'm thankful to be where I'm at, and I'll never take that for granted. In my career, I'm getting bumped around, bruised in the back of the bobsled, so it's super important that I keep up with my sleep, my nutrition, seeing my trainer, seeing the chiropractor, and staying in the gym so I can be at the top of my game when competition comes. My name is uh, Dan O'Neill. I am an NET Foundation board member from North Platte, Nebraska. From the western edge of the state to Lincoln or Omaha is a long way. So state wrestling, state basketball, volleyball, all those events, that truly I think brings the state together because there's just a lot of people that, that wouldn't be able to attend those events. Join me in supporting NET, Nebraska's PBS and NPR stations. 24 to nothing, our halftime score here in Class C1 at Memorial Stadium. Wahoo on top of Pierce. Well, earlier this week, or maybe it was late last week, the Class D6 or six-man championship was contested between McCool Junction and Harvard. McCool Junction wearing the home black, Harvard on wearing the away white uniforms. Good game out at UNK. Coach Stadium, here's Dana Hobbs with an 11-yard rushing touchdown. That nodded the score at six in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, Noah Okraska with a 44-yard strike to Ethan Piper. 
near the end of the half. One yard rushing touchdown by Chase Wilkinson. Both teams score again leading into this highlight. Sack by Okraska. Then on fourth and 15, Okraska, 26 yard strike for the touchdown. Hobbs has a pass intercepted here by Ryan Harms. And then in the fourth quarter, same drive, Akraska, 17-yard strike to Piper for the touchdown, and that made it a three-score game. And the Harvard Home Whites in control. And they score one more time and go on to win the Class D6 six-man championship in Nebraska. As Okraska with the Gatorade back, runner-up trophy for the cool junction of the championship to Harvard. Congratulations on a state championship in six-man football. A quick summary of the game, 50 to 33 was the final. The Cardinals over the Mustangs. Okraska five passing touchdowns, 242 through the air, and Piper with three receiving TDs. Hobbs, nice job from McCool Junction. 120 through the air and 151 rushing. So that's a look at the six-man championship. Let's take a look at some highlights from half number one right here at Memorial Stadium. It was once nice when this game kicked off. Well, once upon a time. <laughs> that's right. Well, that was the big opportunity for Pierce there. They got the turnover off of the punt bobble and then gave it right back. This is exactly, this is where the game changed, in my opinion. We went from getting ready to score seven to giving up seven. First play after the interception. Touchdown run by Lupin. And then the second turnover for Pierce. Interception by Luke Partridge. Partridge has had a nice first half. They stall it out, but kick the field goal to make it 10 to nothing. Then Lubin takes one more in for his second touchdown. That makes it 17 to nothing. The third turnover of the first half right there leads to the third touchdown for Trevin Lubin. Yeah, that's right where the dam started to break. It was just leaky and kind of had a drip, and then all of a sudden it burst. And well, you take a look at these numbers, and you think 167 yards with a turnover wouldn't yield a 24-0 score, but when you're Pierce with only 44 yards rushing, yeah, well, that tells the tale. Well, good time now for you to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter. You can add a comment or catch up on the latest Nebraska sports information. Be sure to like NET Sports and Big Red Wrap Up and join in the discussion. Also, be sure to check out highlights from the games throughout the day across all of our social media platforms and profiles. We are at halftime here in Lincoln, Nebraska Memorial Stadium. Class C1 championship. Wahoo on top of Pierce, 24 to nothing. FFA's vision is to build leaders, grow communities, and strengthen agriculture. The funds from Constellation will most likely be directed to one of those areas. But most importantly, um, people need to know that it is at the local level. It's helping local chapters. Constellation provides natural gas for Nebraska homes, farms, ranches, and businesses. Through our support for 4-H and FFA, we're providing energy for Nebraska's future as well. Natural gas from Constellation. Have you ever wondered what happens to soybeans after they're harvested? Every year, soybean farmers invest a portion of their soybean revenue to fund research, marketing, and promotion, which is called the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff. 80% of the harvested soybeans are crushed into soybean meal that's used to feed poultry and livestock. The other 20% is made into soybean oil that's used for cooking oil and biodiesel. To learn more about the Nebraska Soybean Checkoff, nebraskasoybeans.org. This year, PBS earned 47 News and Documentary Emmy nominations, more than any other network. Look at that. That's awesome. PBS is proud to be America's home for documentaries. Congratulations to all our nominees. Live streaming for the NSAA State High School Football Championships is also available at the NET website and on the free NET Nebraska app.
coverage of the 2019 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, the Nebraska Public Power District, Aurora Cooperative, Constellation Energy, and Sarpy County Tourism. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. You guys, we're at halftime here, the Class C-1 Championship game. Sean Callahan with the head coach of Pierce, Mark Bramer. Coach, down 24 nothing a spot. You guys obviously haven't been in much this season. What did you tell your team here in the locker room? Well, we just got to hit our reset button and, and come out, and we got to fight. You know, uh, that's unlike us. We had time. We were back on our heels throughout much of that first half. Uh, you know, we had the momentum a little bit and had a little bit of that going on our side, and then, we, you know, we let them get right back, uh, the momentum back, and, and uh, obviously had a big interception return, and then we let them score. And then from there, you know, the, 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 the dam is about to break. So we've just challenged our guys to come out and fight here. Um, you know, that's our, our guys are our, our character young guys, and, 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 and they've done a tremendous job all year. So my faith is in them that they'll come out and, and play as hard as they can, get some stops defensively, put some things together, get some first downs, and get a score offensively, and get our tail back in this ball game. All right, Coach, good luck here in the second half. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Bramer, for joining us as we get ready to start quarter number three. Snowflake's getting a little bigger here at Memorial Stadium. Yeah, this is uh, this is ahead of schedule, right? I, I, yes. I was joking. I, I just learned how to read like radar about six, seven months ago. <laughs> so this is kind of new to me. <laughs> but uh, can you read a forecast, but, David? <laughs> yeah, but I but I can tell time and I do know that it was supposed to start around noon. That's right. I think we, uh, you know, baby steps, LP, baby <laughs> steps. Gosh. Initially, we thought maybe it was going to be warm enough that this would be rain early mm -hmm. and we wouldn't see some of the snow until later. Then we'd have a break and more snow later tonight. I'm getting a sense with what's moving in and, and the fact that I can read radar that it's continuing to move into the area and not going to go away. We may get this throughout the afternoon and into the evening, which will make the other two games 34 degrees. 17 miles. The winds have picked up when we started. It was at about three or four. It feels like 19. And if you're Pierce, it probably feels even colder than that. Down 24 to nothing. You want to explain to me this whole Roy G. Biff thing? So what did the color, the dark colors mean, right? Do we want green or blue? Like, what are we, well, what are we doing here? Do you want rain or do you want snow? Green is rain. Okay. And blue is snow. Darker the blue, the darker the snow. The heavier the snow. All right. Huh. So it's you can see it's moving to the east, right? A little swirling motion, pulling the moisture up from the south. I can along see with that. the cold front that's coming from. I could be Ken Shimmick right now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Always oh, keeping it local. Oh, I like that. The green. I, I prefer green. Yeah. Well, I think I think we all. But I will tell you, if I was playing. Hey, Damon, there's your heater. There's the space heater we've been looking for right there. Yeah. You want to those things work too. Call one of your buddies and get it up here. Yeah, I got a guy. <laughs> we know. <laughs> <laughs> for just about whatever we say. Yeah, I got a guy. I got a guy. Well, that 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 coach's guys have been doing it well here in the first half. They're on top, 24 to nothing. <laughs> there is a bit of a huddle around those heaters, aren't there? Isn't there? Yeah. That, uh, where it's warm. Ready to start. This third quarter of play for the Class C-1 state title. It has been all Warriors, and they will get the ball to begin this third quarter of play on top 24 to nothing. The numbers bear it out as well. 167 total yards for Wahoo to just 43 for Pierce. Jaden Roth to kick it deep. That'll be taken at about the nine. It is bobbled and finally picked up by Ludwig. And Ludwig is tripped up down the far sideline. Out past the 20 to maybe the 22-yard line. Looks like it's maybe getting a little slick down there as well, as you saw Ludwig go sliding after the tackle. You know, upon further review, I, I guess I would actually take the snow over the rain if I was playing. Off 
So back out there, quarterback in the shotgun is Tom Wado. Hands it off to Lubin. Trevor Lubin will end the near side. Nice gain on first down. And Lubin slowly racking up the yards here as he's nearing 100. That was his 22nd carry. Yeah, you start getting to the edge like this and fatigue starts to be a factor or morale, one of the two. That's a heck of a tackle by Edens. There's pay dirt around that corner. Seven yards in the carry. Leans over the 30 down, not quite to the 31. It'll bring up third down and short. 99 yards now on 22 carries for Lubin. He came into this game with 1868 on the season, so he needed 132 here in this championship to go over the 2,000 yard mark for the season. And he's well on his way. Lubin again with the carry. That's enough for the first down. Make no mistake about it. This is a good team up front in Pierce that they're going against too. This isn't. I didn't see this kind of physical, you know, mismatch, especially on film. I think the three turnovers in the extra extra possessions just weighs on you. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Can only hold up for so long. Wahoo's size is is significant. Up top. Incomplete. Intended receiver. Might have been Cooper Hancock or maybe Peyton Walling. One of the two. Yeah, he split the difference, didn't he? Yep. <laughs> Second down and ten. Lubin again. Lubin breaks a tackle. Lubin out of the open. Nice cutback and spin move. Lubin over 100 yards now in the game as he trots into Blue Jay territory. And you see the little extra burst gear. This is the Lubin that I saw on film. Watch him put his foot in the dirt and get back vertical. There's one, but how about this one? Now you do. A little burst right there we hadn't seen up until now. Uh huh. 21 yard carry for Lubin, his longest carry of the day. On the other side, here's Ludwig. Ludwig, who rushed for nearly a thousand on the year with a nice carry. And starting to find the edges now. Player down in the field for Pierce. Yeah, that. Oh, that might be on the old shoulder. You saw him kind of land on his. The back of his shoulder there. Trying to avoid a crackback block. Looked like maybe number 52. It's kind of a flash. I mean, Valverde has been active, so that would make sense, but certainly don't want to speculate. While they take a look at the injured player, we'll be back in a moment. Sportsmanship is not simply shaking an opponent's hand after a game. It is maintaining a positive attitude on and off the court, respecting rulings made by officials, and respecting fans and other teams. Sportsmanship is the ability to do what you love while being respectful to officials, opponents, and your teammates. Sportsmanship can not only be found on the court or field, but also among the audience. Parents and fans should practice class and respect along with athletes and coaches. NET Television expands your mind, enlightens your mind, inspires your mind, educates your mind, entertains your mind. NET Television opens up new worlds to you. Explore, travel, learn, discuss, debate. NET Television keeps you informed. Music, theater, dance, art, news. NET Television awakens your dreams, seeks to serve, strengthens our communities. We are Nebraskans. We are NET Television. 
Nebraska's PBS station. While they check out Seth Valverde on the field, we'll take a quick break. Early mornings, late nights, emotionally, physically, mentally tougher. Generations of trust, innovation, and hard work done side by side. The decisions you make for your land and livestock have a direct impact on your operation, the region, and the world. That is why we're there when you need us anytime, every time. We both have one chance, one season, one mission, tougher together. Aurora and you. I'm Nicole Grungart and I'm a part of the U.S. Women's Bobsled Team. I'm a four-time All-American and I'm from Norfolk, Nebraska. Bobsledding was definitely not in the picture when I was growing up but I'm thankful to be where I'm at and I'll never take that for granted. In my career, I'm getting bumped around, bruised in the back of the bobsled, so it's super important that I keep up with my sleep, my nutrition, seeing my trainer, seeing the chiropractor, and staying in the gym so I can be at the top of my game when competition comes. Good sportsmanship means being kind, respectful, and fair to everyone involved in the game. We strive to create a positive environment in which all students can perform to the best of their abilities. We can accomplish this through good sportsmanship and encouraging a desire to succeed. Your actions today are how you are perceived tomorrow. Your character is worth more than any success or achievements you may have. Respect yourself and most importantly, respect others. NET Television expands your mind, enlightens your mind, inspires your mind, educates your mind, entertains your mind. NET Television opens up new worlds to you. Explore, travel, learn, discuss, debate. NET Television keeps you informed. Music, theater, dance, art, news. NET Television awakens your dreams, seeks to serve, strengthens our communities. We are Nebraskans. We are NET Television, Nebraska's PBS station. Medical staff continue to look at Seth Valverde, the 220-pound senior linebacker for Pierce. And now they're putting him on the stretcher, taking all precautions here. We believe he went over a pile and landed on his helmet. We've seen him moving down there. So again, this medical staff will take all the precautions necessary to work with Valverde. Yeah, he did it trying to avoid a, a block was coming towards him and he kind of hurdled the blocker. Obviously, the Pierce teammates out there looking on. So while they continue to work with Valverde, we will step away once again. I've structured my whole life around the idea of, of giving back. It's critical that all of us support NET, and my philosophy is if you, you're using something and you like it, then you need to support it. All my life, I've been blessed with opportunities, but I get more back than I give. It's critical that we as citizens of the state reach out and help fund the programs. Well, it would be very unfortunate if we did not have NET in Nebraska and there would be a real vacuum in the state if we lost NET. If you're watching NET, you should give so that you can support its continuation at the level that it is. It's a very high level quality production. That wouldn't happen if you didn't give. I'm Cecil Biker from Omaha, Nebraska. I watch, listen, and support NET. Back at Memorial Stadium here in this third quarter of the Class C1 state title game. All concerned right now for 
number 52 of Pierce, Seth Valverde, the 220-pound senior linebacker who, in attempting to avoid a block, leaped into the air and landed on his helmet. And they continue to check on Valverde. Medical staff have put him onto the stretcher board and he will be lifted onto the stretcher. Again, David, in these situations, you're just you're taking every necessary and possible precaution you can to provide the best care for Valverde here. Yeah, I tell you, the, the score, the weather, everything else pales mm -hmm. right now in comparison to what's going on, obviously. Small, tight-knit community. One of the, uh, the famous places to go watch a game, right, is the, the Pierce Blue Jays. Right. Yeah. So we're going to step away one more time. Sportsmanship is not simply shaking an opponent's hand after a game. It is maintaining a positive attitude on and off the court, respecting rulings made by officials, and respecting fans and other teams. Sportsmanship is the ability to do what you love while being respectful to officials, opponents, and your teammates. Sportsmanship can not only be found on the court or field, but also among the audience. Parents and fans should practice class and respect along with athletes and coaches. NET Television expands your mind, enlightens your mind, inspires your mind, educates your mind, entertains your mind. NET Television opens up new worlds to you. Explore, travel, learn, discuss, debate. NET Television keeps you informed. Music, theater, dance, art, news. NET Television awakens your dreams, seeks to serve, strengthens our communities. We are Nebraskans. We are NET Television, Nebraska's PBS station. Good sportsmanship is about winning with integrity and losing with grace. Athletics teach lifetime values such as respect for your opponents, referees, classmates, and teachers. There are few better places than in athletic competition to display respect for one another. Take the oath of sportsmanship. Respect the rules, respect the officials, respect the opponents. Cheer for your team, not against the other. NET Television expands your mind, enlightens your mind, inspires your mind educates your mind, entertains your mind. NET Television opens up new worlds to you. Explore, travel, learn, discuss, debate. NET Television keeps you informed. Music, theater, dance, art, news. NET Television awakens your dreams, seeks to serve, strengthens our communities. We are Nebraskans. We are NET Television, Nebraska's PBS station. Back at Memorial Stadium as they continue to tend to Seth Valverde, have him up on the stretcher now. We have seen movement from Valverde, both, you know, taking his feet and moving his arms. But again, they're just going to take every necessary precaution. And I'm sure when they went out and talked to him initially and he was laying there and he said, I fell on my head. The first thing they're going to do is immediately immobilize and do everything they can to, to take care of Seth. Another one of the benefits, uh, you know, to playing at Memorial Stadium, how it's staffed and attendance on hand and first responders on the scene quickly with the, with the medics. Again, stabilizing Seth with the medical personnel. I just want to make sure he's warm. There's the thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Best wishes, young man. So they will wheel Seth off here. He gives the thumbs up.
So now to regroup and refocus here for this Pierce Blue Jay team as they still have nearly two full quarters ahead of them. As you see Seth being wheeled off. Let's go down to the field to Sean Callahan. To yeah, see. guys, that was about a 15 minute delay here um, with the injury. So almost another version of halftime and uh, both teams trying to stay loose. Even the officials uh, told the players stay loose, stay loose, because as you said, guys, it's awfully cold down here and it's a long time to stand around. We'll see how these guys come back off this long injury timeout. Play will resume here. 24 to nothing. Wahoo on top. First down and 10. Breaking a couple of tackles. And the carry by Lubin. Sixth rush of this drive. Five carries for Lubin, 34 yards. Second down and six as they are now at the 30 yard line of the Blue Jays. There won't be a lot of secrets about this one. There's the Maryland eye. Lubin again. The counter action. Slips one tackle down inside the 25. That's going to bring up very short yardage. About a yard shy of the first down. Heavy workload for that young man this morning. Lubin 127 yards. Make check that 132. He needs. Well, that did it. In fact, that last carry put him right at a thousand yards on the season. The sneak by Wado. Wado continues on his feet, getting help from his teammates. Wado with the first down on third and short. in there at I back is Lubin who on that last carry as we said hit the 2000 yard mark on the season Maybe a yard or two on the carry there for Lubin this is a, it's a different Pierce team that we've seen just talking to one of my my good friends who covers this stuff about as close as anyone and he can attest this is not the same Pierce yeah. team that we saw against Adam Central and they played well against Ord and Ord is very big across the front. This is just kind of a testament to how good Wahoo is. On the keeper on the right side. Nice job to stay home by Carson A strike a strike with the tackle. Good discipline here by a strike. Yeah, he's a good football player. I said early on, I kind of like him on the perimeter. You know, even as an electric runner on offense, he can turn right around and be a tough force and set the edge on defense. Good versatility to his game. Third down and eight. Tries to get the corner. Here's. And Ludwig is dropped. Yeah, you see, this is a, you kind of equate this to a little bit of a boxing match, right? Wahoo with a lot of the body blows early between the tackles, guard, center, guard. And now you see the edge game, the sweep game, starting to find the corner for them, just kind of wearing this Pierce defense down. Good tackle there by Edens on that last play. Jacob Edens, the senior left corner and on fourth and seven Warriors will go jump into the power set maybe trying to draw on offsides and the flag for delay nope timeout taken first by Wahoo that's the first timeout of the half they almost got the sense that uh, they didn't mind the extra five yards with Zaragoza's leg, but no sense in bagging your timeouts. Right, right. 
Well, this weekend, AT Sports continues its coverage of Nebraska volleyball. It's Ohio State, the Buckeyes traveling to Lincoln to take the court in the final weekend of the regular season for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Match play begins Saturday night, 7 Central on NET. Huskers with two at home this weekend and then look forward to the postseason in which they will likely host round one and round two. They're not only ranked number six, but also have the number six RPI, which would put them in a top eight national seed as well. Saragossa. Pick is down and on its way. The 31 yard try is just wide by Saragossa. Yeah, he pushed it and there you go. See, that's the emotion that we that I'm accustomed to seeing from these guys, right? They play hard and you know they're not going to go away. It's a spirited bunch on film. So the nearly five minute drive to open up this third quarter goes without points for the Warriors. And Pierce will take over at its own 15. Check that. They're going to put it at the 20 after the missed field goal. So Dalton Freeman back out there at quarterback. Gives to Tinker, and Brent Tinker piled up at the line of scrimmage. Led by the left side of that defensive line for the Warriors. Let's go down to the field to Sean Callahan. Well, guys, we don't quite have snowballs forming, but we do have field turf balls forming here on the field. The cork and the rubber uh, have kind of mixed with the snow. As you can see, it, it's it's starting to take over the field here as it's only going to pick up here as the day moves on. But it is getting slicker down here as the snow begins to accumulate here on the <laughs> field level. Is that a real phenomenon? I don't know, but you don't get that kind of stuff anywhere, man. Good on <laughs> gas can. Who, like, who finds that? <laughs> Slipping one tackle is Freeman. <laughs> Look the forward. visual. I mean, only, only Sean, right? <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I mean, I didn't know that was a thing. I'm a little when taken it, aback. I'm. When I'm, it gets, gets cold, it just kind of. Uh, yeah, all I can think of is Joe Dirt. <laughs> That's not a peanut. <laughs> Third down and four. Spins out of one tackle, but there to shut it down, and a nice tackle by Grant Coulterman. Brings up fourth down. Well, you're a South Lincoln guy, so you, you prefer Dierte. <laughs> I'm here all day, thanks. Yeah. That's, that's what I was afraid of. <laughs> <laughs> Must make. They're going to go for it on fourth. Fourth down, and we'll call it three yards. Lean forward. Astrick near. Did he get it? He's going to come up about a half yard short. How about Wahoo at the point of attack? Wow. I mean, you can hear the pads cracking from up here. Coulterman takes on the blocker and still makes the play. And we highlighted him earlier. I told you, any, anywhere the football is, you'll find number 32. It's yeah. not by accident. That lead dog will hunt. False start will be called against the Warriors. That'll back him up five. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Did you see 53, Kalen Cooper at the point of attack. Mm -hmm. And don't let the long hair fool you. I think it's all part of the mentality. Yeah. He's a wild child, that's for sure. Carry there by Lubin. Tackle made by Cage Heisinger, who's been very active on the inside for the Blue Jays. There is the 270 pound senior Heisinger. So second down and 12 after the loss of two. There's Lubin again. 
Good carry on sec on third down for Lubin. Second down. Check that third down upcoming. And not bad for a guy that was coming in on a little bit of a of a bad wheel. Yeah. Right. And right here in your living room. Look at him going to contact. Tell you what, man, I'm impressed with these quarterbacks so far in the state, these state playoffs with the ability to play defense as well. That was Freeman get delivering the blow. Here's the reverse inside. Nice job of staying home by the Blue Jays. Tackle led by Garrett Meyer, junior linebacker. Oh my goodness, at the point of attack. Boy, Brandon Swan, Swan will, he will rest easy tonight. He has put in work. So fourth down and four. Mix up in the backfield. Kept and dropped. Heisinger again, first guy there to shut down Wado. I like his game, right? We, yeah. we talked about him a couple of times today. The big fella in the middle, Kyler, anchoring that defense. A little disjointed, isn't it? The timing isn't crisp. Wado trying to improvise. Heisinger having none of it. Big fella getting down the action line, too. So I'll see if the Jays can get something going on offense. Back to throw goes Freeman. Out in space. Not much there for Freeman. Tackle made by Bordusky. Bordusky had that interception early in the game after Wahoo had turned it over, and it looked like Pierce was about ready to take the lead deep in. Warrior territory. Picking the return to set up the first score of the game. It's amazing how quickly that pendulum swung, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Inside handoff tripped up. Yeah, I, I, I'm up here. You know, I appreciate the finer things in life, kind of like yourself. With you, it's more things like watches and wine. With me, it's tough football play, but. You take a look at Kalen Cooper, uh, kind of underappreciated, a little under, you know, he's unsung. The way that he plays D line mm. is incredible. Good technician, he's explosive. You watch him on this replay. Gosh, he. It's the way that he comes off the ball and uses his hands. He's got a good flat back. I mean, watch him come off the ball here. I mean, he's having mm. none of it. Oh. Now that's the old teacup bend back game. That is, it's a powerful young man. Looks like Tristan Miller being attended to. And he's walking off on his own. Good news there. We'll bring up third down here for the Blue Jays. Dalton Freeman drops back to throw. Flips it out of the backfield. Tipped up and caught. Good job by Bramer. Ben Bramer with the grab. I thought we would call his name a few more times this morning. He is a really good player on film. Well, he shows you a little bit of the athleticism. Bramer with his ninth catch on the season. And had a ton of opportunities. Yeah. Just a freshman is Ben Bramer. Yeah, say that out loud. Yeah, right. In this game, uh, with this kind of physicality, uh -huh. he definitely belongs. What a kick inside the five, and it's going to be stopped at the half-yard line. What a punt by Logan Moeller. Got the good roll, a nice hustle down the field to keep it from rolling into the end zone. 
Let's take a look. Did that hit the helmet earlier? It's either going to be at the three or the half yard line, one of the two. It's a fantastic hustle either way. Put a fork in it, son. There we go. It was a 69 yard punt. That rivals last night's punt by Sebastian Harsh. Although Harsh's was under a bit more duress. And potentially play of the game. Right. Look out! Breaking a tackle out of the open. Here goes Lubin. Lubin could go down the near sideline. They got an angle and shove him out of bounds. But what a carry to get them out of the shadow of their own end zone. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say it's it, the numbers are so workmanlike without the splash run. And we almost saw 99 and then some. Look at him come out of the back end. He is relentless. But here comes Freeman. He had a nice angle. Didn't give up on the play. Withstood the good old fashioned stiff arm, too. 79 yard carry. Not much there. Hey, and by the way, might as well answer our trivia question, which we asked you earlier today. What is the longest ever play from scrimmage in playoffs in Class C1? Well, Brian Mysick knew the answer was 99 yards by Pierce. So Pierce just saved a 99 yarder against them as they also have the longest run ever. Nate Meyer from Pierce took it 99 yards. And Brian Mysick is from Columbus. Congratulations, Brian. T-shirt on the way. Lubin with another carry. And after that 79-yarder, Lubin is up over 200 now in the game. 32 carries now, nearing 225 yards. He's going to finish his season with over 2,100 rushing yards. And not a bad day at the office. Out on the edge, here's Lubin again. Good stiff arm by Lubin. This game last night, they, they just typify, kind of reaffirms what I love about this game. Just good physical toughness. Doesn't matter if you're an offensive or defensive guy. It's good to see two-way guys laying it on the line, just relentless kind of in that pursuit of excellence. In this case, a championship. Brings up fourth down, fourth and two. Going to be a keeper. Wado leans forward. Wado has enough for the first down. Inside the 10, down to the eight yard line goes Tom Wado, Thomas Wado, quarterback for the Warriors. Put the big guys behind him and drive it through. A lot of humanity down there. <laughs> Small spaces. Lubin cuts it up inside the five down to the two yard line goes Trevin Lubin. It's kind of the perfect complement to the way that this offensive line likes to play, isn't he? He's got just enough patience to allow them to be explosive up front. And, and he kind of embodies what they do. He's good going into contact. He comes out of the back end. He's constantly falling forward. Well, it has been a terrific afternoon and morning for Trevin Lubin. His numbers right now, 234 yards rushing, including this 79-yard carry. The morning doesn't always start when you want it to. It starts when it has to. And day or night, we're up when you are, through the good times, through the tough times, for the necessary and the unexpected. Even when you don't need us at all, we're just a light switch away. And when it's finally time to call it a night, we keep the lights on, ready to do it all over again. Nebraska Public Power District, powering your every day, every day. Take back your garage. Stuck with an extra vehicle that's taking up needed space? Donate it and get your garage back again. 
support quality public media, and get a tax deduction. On the next Big Red Wrap-Up, we'll recap the Maryland game with co-host Sean Callahan and special guest Aaron Sorensen from Hale Varsity. Big Red Wrap-Up, Wednesday at 7 Central on NET World and again at 10 Central on NET. Fourth quarter coming your way from Memorial Stadium in the Class C-1 State Championship. It has been all Warriors, and they are threatening to add to that 24-point lead. Second down, goal to go. Here is Lubin, leans forward. Lubin near the end zone, touchdown! Another touchdown for Trevin Lubin, his fourth of the day. Now you heard Coach Bramer reference the dam kind of breaking at that midway point in the second quarter. Starting to slide off bodies, fall forward. The holes are a little bit bigger now. That was a 99 yard drive if it stands and this is going to be, I believe our first look at replay, right? Correct. This game? The ruling on the field is a touchdown. That play is under further review. So the question is, did his left elbow hit down before the ball crossed the end line? I was asking you last night. I was expecting you to do your homework. I couldn't remember the ruling. I was actually, it was Jay Moore. When does the arm elbow forearm equal a knee or two feet? Well, let's look here. There is the elbow down. Difficult like to tell. He's on another body, though. We didn't. And that was the kind of the issue with Sebastian Harsh last night. You know, was he on Deesing's left leg? Right. It's like the ball had. Yeah, I think he's short. Do you? I think he crossed. I, uh, well, this, I, this, this will. Is, this is this is what I think. I think if last night's was called, a, you're right because you, there's not enough to overturn it. Right. Right. So th what I was gonna say is. If you couldn't overturn last night's with kind of the same angle, which I thought was a touchdown, then you certainly can't overturn this one because yep. that one was called a, no, a non-touchdown last night. This was a touchdown this morning. Yep, so I believe we agree. We do. That this will stand. Unless, of course, there's an angle that we're not looking at, we're not seeing. Let's see the uh, above. Yeah, that's just going to be hard. You, you can't overturn that. Right. These camera angles are pretty ridiculous. <laughs> From this vantage point, you feel like you could do instant replay, right? At further review, the ruling of a touchdown on the field stands. So it is a touchdown. He and means, that is. He means confirms. <laughs> that is four touchdowns for Trevin Lupin. It's been workmanlike. 237 yards for Lubin. Didn't have the explosive run until that that series of 20 yards or more. Extra point is good. 31 to nothing. Warriors on top here in quarter number four. Yardage totals look like this. Trevin Lubin, 237 yards rushing. Pierce, 59 total yards. I remember at one point, Lubin had 22 carries for 100 yards. Right. And so now in his last 13 carries, he's put up better than 130. Well, if you love watching Nebraska High School Championships on NET, we would love to have you help us continue to bring them to you. With your generous donation to NAT, you help us produce more than 200 hours of sports programming each year. Show your support by joining the NET Sports Partners Club. At just $10 a month, we'll send you this exclusive NET Sports Partners Club fleece jacket. 
You could use one today to get your NET jacket. Call 800-634-6788 or visit netnebraska.org slash donate. I don't think they have NET fleece parkas. But we could use that too. Yeah, you know, the next question I would ask is, can employees have those? But of course, I know what Gavin thinks of me. <laughs> Breaking the first tackle, still on his feet. Nice carry here. A strike with a nice return. And you saw a lot of that elusiveness and shiftiness on film. Just has not been able to get it going with much space. But you can see the talent right here. Make you miss. I stay up. Make you miss again. Now you see me, now you don't. Still playing hard. Little ball at the 34 yard line. Let's see if Pierce can get some points on the board here in this fourth quarter. Good strong carry there. Gain of 11 yards on the carry. Brent Tinker. Almost lost to him on that one again. I so I called him kind of my X factor for this offense early. That deception slip game, he can crease you. Just hasn't had a ton of opportunities. If you'd have told me we were within one score of a running clock in this game, I'd have looked at you sideways. Good tackle by Callan Phillips on the carry from Dalton Freeman. Short game, maybe three, call it second down. And seven to go here for the Blue Jays as time continues to tick. 11 minutes to go here in this C1 State Championship game. There's the toss sweep to A strike. Makes one man miss, will not make the next three. Leading the tackle there, Cole Bordusky, number 52, linebacker. Which is so good on the perimeter. Not allowing teams to turn the corner. Look at Walling set the edge, keeps the capes to play inside, turns it back inside for his buddies, and then there goes the swarm of gold. Not sure. I don't. I'm not good with Hughes. It's gold. Yeah, it's gold. You got yeah, it. Thank you. Under pressure, looks downfield, and it's going to be picked off. Who else? Lubin with the pick on the far side. Lubin slid to the ground. The coach just wanted a late hit here after the interception. Look at him high pointed. Yeah. Kind of mistimed his jump, didn't matter. Got it at its highest point. Not his. He's a good athlete. Yeah, that hit was on the, the back of the arm. Hopefully he's okay. Nodding his head. Possession inside Blue Jay territory. Here's the carry by Ludwig. Tinker is there to make the tackle on Ludwig. Must be rough when Lubin gets a break, you bring in Ludwig. <laughs> kind of a change of pace. He's, he's a little faster, maybe. Really good change of direction. Thomas Wado still in there, quarterback for the Warriors. Ludwig again, steps through one and then tripped up in the backfield, and that's Tinker again, and Tinker's been making some nice plays here. Yeah, not a lot of regard for his body. Tinker has been flying around all afternoon. He's hobbling around. Plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. He just looks like a football yeah. player. Leads this team in tackles with 112 on the season. Middle linebacker for the Blue Jays. Yeah, really kind of embodies what that Pierce football program and Pierce community is all about. Lowered the pads. Good pad level there for Ludwig as he gets through the line, picks up the first down. My 
eyesight is awful, but my hearing is fantastic. And to hear these pads just crack play after play after play. It is crisp and physical down there. Back into the game now is Lubin. Gain of three for Lubin, and guess who's there? Brent Tinker again. Brett Tinker, 185 pound senior. Plays much bigger than that, doesn't yeah. he? He brings a load with him. Look at him sift through the trash. Find the football. Clean it up. Lubin cuts it up, breaks the tackle. Tinker with the tackle on Lubin. Yeah, slippery when wet, right? This, this whole second half, we have seen Pierce Blue Jays kind of just fall to the wayside, trying to get to his body. He's kind of imposed his will this second half as we take a look right here. Just a little dipsy do. Almost came out of the back end of this one. Is that Tinker again? It was. He's all over. Lubin now over 250 yards in the game. 37 carries, 252 for Lubin. Ludwig back into the game, and this is Ludwig with the carry. Ludwig has the corner. A nice tackle from behind, pulled down by Garrett Meyer, the outside linebacker. Another good player who splashed on film for Pierce. Did it doing that right there, making plays in the open field. It's good tackling. Gain of four in the carry by Ludwig. Three more will bring up third down. Ludwig now at 40 yards rushing here in this championship game. Back in comes Lubin. Big comic book guy. Ludwig reminds me of this Marvel character by the name of Puck, who had exceptional strength for his size. Ludwig strikes me as that kind of guy. Third and three. Lubin into contact, tries to spin out of the tackle, but Cage Heisinger is there for the tackle. That'll bring up fourth down and about one, maybe a long one. I'll call it two. Uh, much, you know, discretionary income high schoolers have, but if I was Lubin, I'd say, hey, O-line, let's go out to Who's doing two for ones? Maybe McDonald's, PK. <laughs> Spend about 26 bucks. Get the big uglies fed. <laughs> They've done a nice job up front today. Once again, leaning forward, he needed to get past the 11 down to the 10 for a first down. He is past the 11, so that's likely going to be a first down by about a half yard. Look at this surge for Heisinger. Hung in there all day, hadn't he? 78, the man in the middle. Making you work for everything you get. Mm -hmm. Garrett Meyer underneath that pile once again for the Blue Jays. Clock just continues to tick here on another long clock chewing drive for Wahoo. Guess who? Brent Taker. He's got to be bigger than 185. <laughs> I mean, he is all seek and destroy. Shoots a gap, little run blitz. What? See, he sees it. He plays underneath the puller. You know, he almost wants Swan to kind of curl up inside the hole. But that's tough. You know, you, Lubin's got to kind of get on his hip, too. So a loss on the play. About a half yard. 
Now Lubin has the corner. Lubin, touchdown! Five on the day for Trevin Lubin. Yeah, just what we just highlighted happened the other way. This time he did get in the hip pocket. Tinker's a little, you know, do he, does he shoot the gap or get out in front? See him get on the hip this time as opposed to cutting it up. It's the kind of wrinkle he can give you as a good ball carrier. He's got to think, if those offensive linemen have cameras in their rear end, you always want to be in the picture as a runner. It's not a close-up, I hope. Listen, if I'm scoring... <laughs> Give me that selfie. <laughs> 38 to nothing. It has been a dominant performance for the Warriors. 11 plays, 48 yards, and they chewed up nearly six minutes of clock on the touchdown drive. Walling continuing to do the dirty work. Now 24 points off turnovers for the Warriors. Let's go down to the field to Sean Callahan. Guys, you look at just the culture Coach Fox has built here at Wahoo. They had 65 kids out for football. That was the most ever in school history. 16 seniors on this team as well. So he's done a really good job of building it up, uh, getting kids want it, uh, wanting to go out, which as we know in today's football world, you, you don't get the numbers maybe that we used to see in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, so to have a roster of 65 in the C1 level and the depth and the competition they build, it's showing out here on the field today. Sean, how dare you bring up the 90s <laughs> in this stadium? Kind of a nice little run. Yeah. Winston Cook led company in basketball, finished runner-ups in right. basketball. Yep. Football team finds themselves on the verge of a state championship. A first ever. How about that? Yeah. First ever trip to these championship finals and looking to take home their first state championship. If you're, if you're not going to get there as often as you like, you might as well win it when you do. Right. right? Isn't that just the easy way to do it? Yep. Kind of like Coach K when he gets to the Final Four as of late. It's <laughs> my only subtle Duke shot I'll give. End over end, taken at the 10. Reverses field. Another nice return by Carson Eistrick. And Eistrick. And tough sledding for the leading rusher for the Blue Jays today. I can't remember outside of special teams anytime I've seen him really in space. Rushed for 1,500 plus yards on the season, 23 touchdowns, and just it's been tough to get going. Here's a here's a stat for you, Damon. Lubin today with five touchdowns. Pierce, three first downs. Yeah, and that's and only one in the second half. I mean, Wahoo's defense held true to form. That you came in wondering, were they for real? They hadn't given up more than 14 points all season. They were going to meet the kind of the their Not opponent in the mirror in Pierce, and they were right. they, they were ready for the task today, and this morning. Odd for a two and a four seed to both come in at a combined 24 and 0. Right. And drop for a loss. Nice play by Brandon Swan. Like I said his name quite a bit tonight for a guy that does it or this morning for a yeah. guy that does a lot of the dirty work. It's a good football player. And there's another one right there, number 20, Walling. Well, underappreciated guys. So a loss of six brings up second, or loss of one brings up second and 16. Back across the field. Carry here by Tinker. Gets the six yards back, will bring up third down and 10 for the Blue Jays. He's given it all today, hasn't he? Oh, yes, he has. He has left this. He has left it all out there. He went into contact right there. 
This plays with reckless abandon. Here's the toss to a strike. A strike. Fumble. Boy, that has just kind of been the story of Pierce's day. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say I like the fact he didn't want to get out of bounds. He's going to try to cut that back and get as much as he could. And that has been the story as you just illustrated. Just kind of slips out. Well, Thielen hustling down the line of scrims. That's a oh. lineman mm -hmm. coming back to make the play. Running clock is in order. We're at 1.30 and ticking. Wado hands off to Lubin one more time. Yeah, tinkering back out there on the field. You're shocked that he was kind of in the fray. Handshakes and hugs all around for Coach Fox. Into victory formation now for the Warriors. For the first time in program history, the Warriors are state champs. And what a dominant performance here in this state championship game. I think it was one of those Balls that started rolling, they just couldn't stop the momentum. Pierce. Yeah, the way that they play up front. He just can't, can't give a good team that many opportunities at it. They made him pay. When we come back, medals and trophies will be handed out to our runners up and the champs right here at Memorial Stadium. Stay with us. This is Marion Ross. Please join me and Gavin McLeod in a classic Christmas. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Thursday night at 8 central on NET. This fall, it's a season of inspiration and revelation. Witness the power of education with College Behind Bars. It changes your whole outlook. It's hard, but it's rewarding. Discover new ways to look at ourselves in life from above. Experience one family's journey through the Syrian conflict. And enjoy Broadway's best with great performances. All this and more this season. Plastic is all around us, and we use it every day. We are turning this place into Planet Plastic. From our cups, to our phones, to our cars. But when we're done with it, plastic doesn't just disappear. Most of the plastic made over the last 70 years is still here. How our plastic habit has grown, and how to break our plastic addiction. The Plastic Problem. Wednesday night at 9 central on NET. Coverage of the 2019 NSAA High School Football Championships on NET is made possible in part by the Nebraska Soybean Board, Education Quest Foundation, the Nebraska Public Power District, Aurora Cooperative, Constellation Energy, and Sarpy County Tourism. A big thank you to all of our sponsors who help us bring you the best high school athletes from across the state. We could not do it without your support. Class C2 title game in the books, and they are your champs. First time ever, the Warriors of Wahoo. 
I'll take home the trophy. 38 to nothing is the final. If you'd like a DVD of today's game from the NSAA High School State Championships, just call 800-868-1868. You can also visit netnebraska.org. For 1995 plus shipping and handling, you can relive all of the excitement from this year's championships for years to come. Time now to introduce you to the runners up and the medal presentations. And for that, we head to public address announcer, Steve Lemon. The Nebraska School Activities Association is honored to have medals and trophies for both of these outstanding teams. Presentations will be made by NSAA Executive Director Jay Beller, NSAA Board of Directors Dr. John Cerny from Bancroft Rosalie, Kathy Wieskamp from Lincoln Public Schools, and U.S. Bank Representative C.J. Cooper. Here are the awards for runner-up Pierce High. Head coach Mark Bramer and his assistants will present the silver medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number one, Ritter A Strike. Number two, Gavin Larson. Number three, Jaden Roth. Number four, Dalton Freeman. Number five, Jaden Sporlitter. Number seven, Carson A. Strike. Number eight, David Dale. Number nine, Isaiah Adams. Number 10, Dalton Delka. Number 11, Colton Cooper. Number 12, Jacob Eddins. Number 14, Caden Johnson. Number 15, Ben Bramer. Number 17, Abram Schulting. Number 21, Logan Moeller. Number 22, Tyler Race. Number 24, Jeremiah Kuntrod. Number 25, Seth Kramer. Number 26, Ethan Doman. Number 34, Zach Collison. Number 35, Ashton Schweitzer. Number 38, Nick Harvey. Number 42, Luke Collison. Number 43, Dean Orwig. Number 44, Michael Kuntrod. Number 48, Brett Tinker. Number 51, Hunter Raby. Number 52, Seth Valverde. Number 54, Sean Wrinkle. Number 56, Trevor Pettit. Number 57, Dylan Rydell.
Number 58, Colby Rickard. Number 59, Bodie Hoffman. Number 60, Dylan Svoboda. Number 61, Carter Rorick. Number 62, Alex Meyer. Number 63, Tristan Miller. Number 64, Cruz Gleason. Number 65, Carter Meyer. Number 66, Nick Erickson. Number 67, Dawson Raby. Number 68, Lucas Kanat. Number 69, Christian Miller. Number 70, Derek Coulterman. Number 71, Taylor Zamora. Number 73, Dylan Keeler. Number 75, David Taylor. Number 76, Tanner Cooper. Number 77, Jaden Jones. Number 78, Cage Heisinger. Number 79, Aiden Keelan. Number 81, Garrett Meyer. Number 82, Colton Fritz. Number 88, Tyler Peters. Number 89, Max Cooper. Now for these outstanding athletes in their school, here is the 2019 NSAA Class C1 State Football Runner-Up Trophy. Congratulations, Pierce High School. Congratulations, good season. Well, a terrific season for the Blue Jays from Pierce. Their first trip down here to Memorial Stadium since 2010, and they'll take home the runner-up trophy in 2019. What a great year it was, though, 12 and 1. They just ran into a buzzsaw that got some breaks early today in this Wahoo team. Yeah, absolutely. So good up front all season long, running the football and being dominant along the trenches, and they met their match today in this Wahoo bunch. Go back to Steve Lemon. And now to the champions, Wahoo High School. Head coach Chad Fox, we have a special award for you. Coach Fox and his assistants will present the gold medals. Players, please come forward as your name is called. Number two, Sebastian Losterer. Number three, Connor Granjanet. Number four, Colin Ludwig. Number six, Rolando Sotelo.
number seven, Justin McAvoy. Number eight, Cooper Hancock. Number nine, Tate Nelson. Number 10, Jordan Broom. Number 11, Trevin Lubin. Number 12, Owen Hancock. Number 13, Trent Hollowell. Number 14, Brett Whitaker. Number 15, Thomas Wado. Number 16, Brent Ben Thrasher. Number 17, Griffin Loster. Number 19, Jesus Zaragoza. Number 20, Peyton Walling. Number 21, Zach Fox. Number 22, Malachi Bordoski. Number 23, Joseph Herrera. Number 24, Kyan Loster. Number 25, William Nielsen. Number 26, Luke Hartridge. Number 28, Kevin McCorney. Number 29, Trevor Ehrlich. Number 30, Kale Eady. Number 31, Brandon Miranda. Number 32, Grant Holterman. Number 33, Damian Bragg. Number 41, Nathan Mather. Number 42, Noah Evans. Number 43, Curtis Swan. Number 44, Nate Fox. Number 50, Logan Brabeck. Number 51, Jacob Andreessen. Number 52, Cole Bordowski. Number 53, Alan Cooper. Number 54, Gage Sherman. Number 55, Trevor Bohati. Number 56, Evan Divis. Number 57, David Divis. Number 58, Brody Specht. Number 60, Brandon Swan. Number 61, Matthew Holdsworth. Number 62, Justin Knuckles. Number 63, Jake Bordusky. Number 66, Callan Phillips. Number 67, Zach Hamling. Number 68, Samuel Dubois. 
Number 73, Seth Williams. Number 74, Dawson Raftaset. Number 75, Carson Lavalley. Number 76, Harrison Siebenhaller. Number 78, Waylon Sherman. Number 79, Gunnar Vonjak. Presenting the championship game ball from Farmers Mutual Insurance is Vice President of Agencies, Andy Krause. And now for these outstanding athletes and their school, here is the 2019 NSAA Class C1 State Football Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Wahoo High School. Well, congratulations to Wahoo. First one's the special one, that's for sure. Let's go down to the field with Sean Callahan. Guys, I'm with the winning coach here, Chad Fox, coach. First ever appearance in Lincoln, first state championship for Wahoo. How's it feel to get this done today? You know, it's just awesome. Uh, the kids played so well. Uh, you know, it was a long 10 days of preparation to get to this point. At least it felt that way, and our kids handled that very well, and they obviously showed up today and, and played exceptionally well and against a tough an opponent. So I uh, love the way we played. Um, very proud of these boys for, for the way they showed up. That early turnover exchange in the first half, that seemed to kind of be what, what tilted the game your way. How big was that moment, and then how did you guys take advantage of the rest of the way? You know, I, you know we even had a turnover there, and we didn't blink on that. We just kind of kept chugging away, and we, over, we responded to that adversity. And then, yes, they, they, they got uh, either a pick or a turnover there, but we, we were able to capitalize on that, and that was huge. And that got some momentum going, and that got some confidence built up with the offensive line and the running backs. and and we were able to just keep things rolling from that point on. And you've had a lot of good ones, but Trevin has got to be right up there, uh, his performance here on the big stage. What has he meant to your program? You know, absolutely, and we've had some really good running backs over the years, but Trev is going to finish out being our scoring leader for the career and, and also our season uh, scoring leader for this season, and then he's going to be a career rushing leader as well as our single season rushing leader from last year's deal. So he's a tremendous athlete and very fortunate that he's on our team. and, and uh, I'm glad he can carry a heavy load because he's carried it a ton this year for us. Well, congratulations, Coach. Go enjoy that state championship. Let's bring in some of these guys now. We've got Cole Podorski and Trevin Lubin. Come on in, guys, here as uh, we talk about the state championship. First of all, Trevin, uh, you guys got it done, uh, you know, undefeated matchup. Did you expect a game like this that you guys could come out and make a statement like this today? Not at all. You know, we figured it was going to be a dogfight and come down to the very end. We knew we'd have to stay strong and have that fourth quarter conditioning come in and I don't know. I'm, I'm still shocked about it. You guys punched them in the mouth. I mean, did, did you think they would respond like that? I mean, it, just to put them down like that, it, obviously Pierce wasn't used to that, and you guys just kept going. You know, I think our, it shows how good our defense actually is. You know, it would get overlooked by our offense a lot. But when it shows up, we put in so much work over this to emphasize how, how good their offense was going to be, and it shows off that hard work pays off. And you're you're going to Nebraska. Uh, you'll be walking on here. How excited are you now to kind of turn the page of the state championship and head to Lincoln? Yeah, I'm so excited to be on this field again. You know, it's uh, it's incredible. I'm still lost for words that it's still going to happen. Well, congratulations, Trevor. Let's bring in Cole here. Cole had that big interception that kind of really turned this game. I mean, that moment, when you look back at it, how big was that moment in this game? It was a really big moment because we just uh, dropped the fum uh, fumble on the punt return and it was just a big moment and we took it down I took it down I got caught but we turned into a touchdown and it was a really big momentum swing in the end you guys had you guys had been um, in the semifinals three years in a row before this to finally get here and get it done it's the first one ever in Wahoo school history you guys have been known as a basketball school for many years now Wahoo is a football town how's it feel it feels amazing we know those last two years really were on all the seniors shoulders because a lot of us played in those two games and it was it made it even more rewarding pulling this one out at the end finally after three years well Cole congratulations go enjoy that state championship thank you guys back up to you a lot of teeth chattering going on there. Yeah, uh, it made me cold. That's right. <laughs> Maybe it's the booth that made me cold. I don't know. One of the two. Well, there they are, the state champs for the first time, the Wahoo Warriors. Congratulations to that team, to Coach Fox. Coming up at 2.30, 
Oakland Craig and Sutton will battle for the C2 title right back here at Memorial Stadium. So once again, first time state champs, the Wahoo Warriors, they knock off Pierce. For Damon Binning, for Sean Callahan, for the entire NET Sports production crew, I'm Larry Putney. We'll see you back here this afternoon. For now, goodbye from Memorial Stadium. Oh, <laughs>